<clears throat> okay, so I've been asked, or rather tasked, to present the uh, active role of uh, neck dissection. Now, not unlike this guy that walks into a diner and asks the uh, waitress for an egg and a good word, and he, she brings the eggs, and he says, what about the good word? And she says, don't eat it. <laughs> so, <laughs> you see, these recommendations are definitely biased, but... And while what I would discuss here is certainly valid, it just shows one side of the coin, and this should be remembered. So, without further ado, this is Sheba's place in the universe. Oh, keep modest, that's my motto. So, uh, when we talk about level six, uh, this is what we mean. This is quite complex, but basically we're talking about the central section around the, the gland. You see the margins here, the borders here, and it contains uh, quite an amount of lymphatics that spread in different ways and may be involved in any way as seen here. Now, uh, there is a large um, number of positive nodes, but again, their significance was just discussed here, so we won't go too much into that, except to say that even 10% of positive nodes means a large number of patients. Now, do bear in mind that when we talk about goals of treatment, we want to improve survival, definitely, decrease the rate of recurrence, which goes without saying, with minimal uh, morbidity. So the recommendations for the former or not the updated guidelines are all um, recommendation rating B and C, seen here, let's not go into that. Now, commonly accepted indications for neck dissection for level six would be uh, medullary cancer, invasive cancer, high risks, start to define those, etc. But when we talk about uh, well-differentiated cancer, especially papillary cancer, we see a wide variety of recommendations from the Japanese group that routinely recommended the American uh, endocrinologist surgeons and society not necessarily recommended and other guidelines. So certainly uh, controversy does exist. Now, when we uh, try to summarize what the values and benefits uh, are, as seen here by Mazaferi's paper, so the, the conclusion here is that the recommendations support to an extent the, doing the central leg dissection routinely uh, in expert hands. And then again, the, the claim is that many uh, thyroid cases done, at least in the United States, and I assume here as well, are not by what we would call high volume surgeons. So that's another issue here. Uh, so, but it supports, or maybe not. Now, just uh, to throw the spotlight on some uh, issues here. We know that uh, imaging, even in expert hands, does not necessarily tell us if there are involved nodes. So, this is one point. Plus, even intraoperative, sometimes, uh, you're in there in the neck, and even if you see nodes and you say, let's sample this one, or maybe just let it be, and if you do sample and you're sure it's positive and it's negative and vice versa, so it's not even clear when you're in the field. Um, the effects on radioiodine, they say it improves, uh, you can uh, treat less, so here's another uh, pro for the issue here, TG levels. Uh, again, those who uh, support central neck, or at least uh, unbiased, do show that uh, there may be a benefit regarding uh, further treatment. Now, as far as complications are concerned, and this is one point I would like to stress, that no matter your experience, if you don't do anything as far as complications go, uh, there won't be any complications. And even if the, the literature does show that there is no significant difference in complications, having the ability to do, perform surgery and say, hey, if they came out okay, it's not an indication in itself. So obviously we do have to look at all criteria. Uh, so if we, uh, <clears throat> this is a summary more or less of the pros, and we do know that essentially metastases have a negative effect on the outcome. Okay, having said that, uh, we say, I, as I've mentioned before, cannot be necessarily detected clinically. 
and it can be performed safely. Now, reoperation, uh, again, one side of the coin. Some, most papers of an experience center say there's no difference, but essentially there is maybe a trend of sorts to show that could be a greater incidence of uh, complications, and we have seen here uh, just now. Now, as far as staging is concerned, there's certainly this uh, uh, keynote or this marked issue here, upstaging after uh, finding out positive uh, metastases. And the uh, thyroglobulin issue, the radioiodine, and this last uh, sentence is really lip service of sorts, because yes, it may affect, certainly it may affect, yes. So if we look again at key issues, this is controversial, this maybe not, it is controversial, controversial. So to summarize this, and I'll just add a few words regarding the patient that was discussed here, but uh, I'm not sure that um, we, you know, controversy is good, but I think if we had one firm belief that was really based, evidence-based, it would have been better. But I do believe that due to the greater numbers of uh, uh, patients that we need for really good studies and the diversity of the, uh, what people define as the neck, uh, the, the borders, while they're well uh, defined, certainly not everybody clears them carotid to carotid, hyoid to sternal notch. So I think that for many years to come, we would still, still see the discussions that some would say yes, some would say no, and because it's such a forgiving disease in a sense, then we can get away, I guess, with the speculation, and uh, thank you very much.